Welcome to GameSpot's coverage of E3 2018. I'm Callie, and I'm here with Thomas Mahler, CEO and Game Director over at Moon Studios, and we're going to be talking about Ori and the Will of the Wisps. Yes. So you guys um, announced last year, and yes. you showed off some gameplay at E3. Can you talk a little bit about, talk us through the kind of what we saw during the press conferences? Um, so we announced the game last year. We announced with just issuing a couple of environments, a little bit of art and so on, and basically just saying, hey, we're making another Ori game, right? So this year we knew, well, gamers would really just want to say, hey, you know, shut up, show us gameplay. So we did just that. I mean, we came with uh, a trailer that was really, really focused on gameplay this time around. And then we also, at the show floor, we're showing a playable build. We were showing uh, basically three main big th th three main big things. Uh, there's a whole new combat system. So as you see, when Ori is jumping around right now and so on, there's spells now. There's uh, different weapons that Ori can wield. Um, and we try to really take it further than any Metroidvania has ever done it before. So every single weapon has its own animation style and so on. Um, the play styles are completely different between those weapons. And yeah, we just really wanted to elevate the combat this time around to the same level that we did platforming for the first game. Okay, so, so that's kind of your focus is the first game is platforming and this one's more combat. Now this time it's both, right? It's like both. We wanted okay. to elevate the platforming even more. And uh, a lot of times in development, when we when we started with Will of the Wisps, it was, it was a lot about hey, what cool new moves will Ori be able to do this time, right? But then also, like, I'm I'm crazy about reading all the message boards and, like, all the press stuff, like, what, what critics have been saying. And a lot of them did want to have more variety in combat. So we just basically said, hey, we want to have that on that level as well and really go crazy this time. So did the feedback on the first Ori really influence Will of the Wisps then? It absolutely did. I'm, 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 I'm on all these forums and so on. I read what the, fans, uh, what the fans write. I read every single review that's out there. And yeah, it's just like to us, it's really about art and the craft, right? And, uh, and, and we really want to make this perfect package where we just perfect that thing. Because I think there's a lot of Ori fans out there that... No, that, and we want them to know, hey, when we ship something, that it's a little masterpiece, right? That it's really something that uh, even 10 years from now, you can still enjoy playing it, right? That it's this perfectly crafted package. So I know you guys can't really talk about story too much now, but is there a story reason for certain weapons and, and abilities this time around? Yeah, we're not giving that away. Can't t t <laughs> you know what? That's fair. And I know people won't, wa won't want to be spoiled because I know, yeah. you know, story is something really important in Ori, and that's something that, that really resonated with a lot of people. And I'm yeah. sure you've read, the, knowing that you read so much of the feedback. Yeah. Does that get hard, reading feedback as a creator, um, knowing what you intended to make and seeing how people receive it? Um, no, we really enjoy it. I mean, generally, I'm, I'm kind of like a little bit of a perfectionist, and we have a lot of people at Moon that are perfectionists. So we read, like, it's nice to see all the positive comments and so on, right? And we really like watching people on YouTube crying while they're playing Ori. But I'm really always looking for, you know, is there any criticism and how can we do even better, right? How can we make it, how can we craft something that is that takes it even further? Or, or some people, um, yeah, I mean, there were a lot of people that enjoyed Ori and the Blind Forest, and, but there were some people that, you know, that, that liked it, but then certain aspects of it, they wished to have more of that. And so, yeah, this time we really try to get everybody, right? So we're hoping that even people who didn't, who we didn't quite get with Ori and the Blind Forest, who preferred other Metroidvanias, that we this time really have something for them. Mm -hmm. um, what besides, you know, having more, you know, strict Metroidvania aspects, uh, was one of the criticisms that you guys tried to address this time around? Um, I think the combat was the, uh, combat was the big one, and the other thing that people brought up was that the game was fairly difficult, right? I was going to say that <laughs> the Ori and the Blind Forest is a pretty difficult game. Yeah. So the thing is, though, we didn't want to take away the challenge. We we like a good challenge. I mean, and games have a kind of like a renaissance with that now, right? Like with Dark Souls and these kind of things that. No, challenging games can be a lot of fun, right? But did this time, like, we, we really looked at, well, what is frustrating about Ori? And there were a couple of things that were frustrating. For example, we had the escape sequences in Ori and the Blind Forest that were pretty difficult. They were kind of like our versions of bosses because the game was very much focused on platforming. So at the end of every single dungeon and so on, you had to escape the dungeon, right, and really perform all the moves that, that we taught you um, during this dungeon, right? Um, and th but there were a couple of things, like for example, in, before any of these escape sequences, we saved your game. So 
basically we told you, hey, you really have to finish that sequence right now in order to continue playing the game. And this time we kind of like solved that. We made sure that, hey, people can go out, go back to the overworld, explore a little bit more, do a couple of more quests, right? Upgrade um, their abilities, their skills and so on, and then come back when they're ready. So we didn't want to do baby mode, right, and just simplify things. We wanted to still make the game like really pack a punch, but give the player the ability to really, you know, learn and, and, and you know, and, and play the sequence, the difficult sequence, when they're ready to do so. Okay, so not a difficulty slider or difficulty options, but just a little bit more forewarning when you're about to go into something a little trickier. We did bring difficulty options you into do. the definitive edition mm -hmm. of Blind Force. Right. Uh, this time around, like we haven't decided yet. Um, we're currently designing the game in a way where we hope uh, it's a it's a that it that it fits for everybody because you can sort of regulate the difficulty for yourself by. Uh, choosing which uh, spirit shards you use and so on. So we, we completely redesigned the ability tree that was in Orient the Blind Forest. So this time, for example, if you have trouble with platforming, <coughs> excuse me, that we have uh, spirit shards that you can equip that then make your platforming a little bit easier, right? But if you have trouble with combat, um, that there's also shards for that and so on. So we really want to give these tools to the player uh, and and help them that way, but also, you know, really bring in variety in terms of, um, hey, if you want to play in a certain way, you should be able to do so, right? Like there's games out there, like for example, when I play a Dark Souls, um, it doesn't really allow me to play through the game with just the bow, right? But if I want to play that way, then as a player, I think I should have the tools available to actually play that way. And with that spirit child system that, we bring, that we're bringing in, uh, we're really giving you that ability. And it, it goes to crazy levels, all the modifiers that are in the game right now and how you can craft the combat um, to your particular play style is super cool. I'm really glad you brought up um, other games like Dark Souls because uh, in a previous interview that we did with you guys, um, I, I'm not sure who mentioned it, but uh, somebody mentioned that Mario was a big inspiration for Ori. Oh, yeah. And I was wondering if you could expand on that a little bit, because I find that really interesting, especially because tonally they are completely different games. I mean, I, I, I grew up playing Mario, right? I grew up playing games like Super Mario Bros. and Super Mario Bros. 3 and so on. One of the design philosophies actually for um, Ori and the Will of the Wisps was when Microsoft first approached us about making a sequel, I kind of told them, hey, I only want to make the game if you allow us to turn Will of the Wisps, uh, to make Will of the Wisps should be to Blind Forest, what Super Mario Bros. 3 was to Super Mario Bros. 1. So we wanted to take the game, the core of it, that was already good, but improve upon it on every level, right? And... Um, yeah, I mean, to me, Nintendo games are generally a huge influence. I think you see that when we when you look at Ori, right? That we that we definitely take inspiration from Mario, from Zelda, from Metroid, um, and um, yeah. But I think at this point, Ori is kind of like its own thing, and and it became its own thing. And there's definitely like we definitely try to push that for it as well. We have a lot more NPCs, like characters in the game. Um, we were lucky enough that on Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, People really already felt emotionally attached to our characters, and I love that. So we 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 brought in a lot more characters that all have their own unique storylines, right? That also give you quests and so on, and they also go through their challenges as Ori goes through his journey. And I think that's going to be really cool for people to see. Awesome. Um, I think we have to to wrap up pretty soon, but. Um can you say even? I know you can't talk about story, but can you say when we can expect maybe to hear a little bit more about that? Uh, about the story? Yes. Um, as time goes by. <laughs> <laughs> fair yeah, enough, I mean, fair enough. We, we just want to make sure that we keep it a little bit close to a chest because I, I, I know that Ori is a game where a lot of people play it because of the story and because they feel so emotionally attached to the characters and so on. And this time, I think the story, the way we... Like, the, the, the game basically continues. Ori and the Will of the Wisp continu continues right after Ori and the Blind Forest. And this time, we really, like, changed the theme a little bit. To me, Ori and the Blind Forest was a lot about um, the love parents have for their children. This time, it's about um, siblings, basically. Well, thank you so much for that little tidbit. I'm, <laughs> I'm very, very excited. Um, and again, thank you, Thomas Mahler from Moon Studios. Thank you for giving us uh, a little bit of a rundown on Absolutely. Will of the Wisps. You can find out more about Ori on uh, GameSpot right now because we have a ton of coverage on E3 2018. So if you missed anything, go check that out right now. We have all of it. Uh, and we'll see you next time.